Glad to have landed safely and be back in the saddle. Good, good. So this week we've got Mark 8, 31 to the end. Uh, Jesus um, take, saying, take up your cross and mm -hmm. follow me. Um, it begins with Jesus explaining to the disciples, this is just after Peter has declared he is the Messiah and has recognised who he is, uh, that um, Jesus says, I'm going to go up to Jerusalem, be treated grievously, put to death, and three days later rise from the dead. And Peter says, this mustn't happen to you. And Jesus then says, get thee behind me me satan for what you are saying does not come from uh, human beings uh does not come from god but from human beings rather um and um first of all it's interesting the timing that jesus has for explaining taking up the cross presumably if he'd said any earlier to the disciples about taking up the cross they might have run up run a few miles from following him <laughs> it's only when the pennies yeah. beginning to drop that this this guy is uh, translucent to God and seems to be identifiable with God and is the Messiah that they begin that he that Jesus times it so that he's now able to give them that teaching mm. as well, perhaps. But one of the things that intrigues me here and that we often skip over is Satan. We often use yeah. that phrase, get thee behind me, Satan. So what is the nature of Satan in this passage? Well, the nature of Satan is not a horned beast that's rather red with a very long tail and a trident. Uh, Satan appears to be that power which is putting self-interest in the centre of the stage to the point of eclipsing the purposes of God. And that's what Peter is really saying. This mustn't mm. happen to you. You can't let this happen to you. You're, you're the Messiah. You need to look after mm. yourself. <laughs> Um, and it's interesting if you look back at uh, the temptations in the wilderness, that again, the way in which the satanic endeavours to tempt is through putting our own selves, whether uh, the, the, the desire to be fed or the desire for acclaim and popularity or the desire for control and power, uh, you put that ahead of your service of the divine. So... Um, there's, there's something really important, I think, about the nature of uh, our desires and the way in which they need to be reshaped by placing uh, God at the centre rather than our immediate whims and uh, wants. I think it was, um, was it Herbert McCabe or Dallas Willard? One of the two said, uh, God wants to empower us to the point where we can do what we want. God wants to empower us to the point that we can do where we what we want. But, but, a lot of work needs to be done on what we want yeah, I was say. <laughs> before <laughs> the God can so empower <laughs> us. And that's partly the point of the taking up of our cross, it seems to me. That actually there's something about our wants being reshaped by following our Lord in the image and likeness of our Lord, which actually going through that kind of uh, cross to the life that lies the other side of it will enable us to realise a flourishing that we cannot realise otherwise. So, uh, I mean, and there are, there are small examples of this in our own lives, aren't there, of, of self-denial and discipline that enable us to arrive at a place of freedom and fulfilment, mm. musically, artistically, athletically, uh, theologically, uh, that, that we know are ultimately freeing and ultimately about our flourishing, but are not without uh, anguish and difficulty and sacrifice. Mm. And that, it seems to me, is but a small echo of the kind of dynamic we're seeing in this passage and how Jesus calls us to that kind of uh, denial and sacrifice uh, for his sake, in alignment with the Father's will, which is not about austerity and not finally actually about, about denial, but is about the way to a kind of flourishing we can't realise otherwise. Mm. 
So that's where I'm at with it. Where are you at? Well, um, I think I was picking up some similar themes-ish. Um, it certainly dovetails quite nicely with what you were what you're saying, because uh, one of the things I really like about this passage is the idea of Peter rebuking Jesus. <laughs> you know, I mean, the audacity of it, you know. I mean, <laughs> remonstrates yeah, according to the New Jerusalem Bible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and... Um, uh, and I like that that the fact that that is there, and uh, and there is something there is something in that about Peter, at the very least, being honest mm. about uh, who he is and what he's feeling, what he thinks. But Jesus's response to that is to meet that with uh, an equal force of honesty and saying, you know, you you can't control me. Mm. You know, you have this idea of who you think I should be and I'm not that person and I'm not going to let you project onto me the things that you think I should be so Peter is is uh, he's allowed to be honest but but Jesus says to him uh, like let, okay let me be honest with you so this is this is not who I am and if you are going to follow me let me be honest about what that is going to look like. Mm. So there's something in this passage about, yes, being honest, but also about leaving some space for God to be God. <laughs> and how often do we try to control God or have this sense of projection, project a sense of who God should be, which kind of goes to your point about, well, what is the... What's the satanic in this? Mm. And it's that sort of sense of trying to manipulate God. You know, so yeah. you know, when people say, well, you, well, you know, you did this for this person, why don't you do it for somebody else? Mm. Why don't you why hasn't my life worked out like this? Like actually there's a there's there's more dynamics going on. Well, it echoes uh, John 13 again, where um where Jesus uh puts a towel around his waist, pours water in a bowl, and starts mm. washing the feet, and Peter says you're going to wash my feet <laughs> like this as if as yeah. if to remonstrate again yeah, yeah. and uh jesus said you don't know what i'm doing now but afterwards you'll understand and of course peter's not having any of it you're not going to wash my feet mm. to mm. which jesus <laughs> well, whatever don't wash your feet you don't have any part of me then yeah. and so peter goes oh okay then we'll wash all of me at which yeah. point i assume jesus laughs because he says you're clean apart from your feet you just need your feet washing man and it's it's interesting, actually, that it's John 13, because just before that, talking of the satanic, uh, Jesus says in John 12 about now the ruler of this world is thrown out. Uh, now is the judgment of this world. And that's the moment at which the Son of Man is lifted up on the cross. So there's something about the cross that distills that foregoing of one's own will for the sake of the will of God, something about letting go of one's own kingdom for the sake of God's kingdom, which is actually the overthrow of the satanic and of evil, and actually the uh, opening up to life uh, that we cannot otherwise dream of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah.